former CEO of Maslok, Sedena Tamaku Atoinu, has been sentenced to 10 years in prison with hard labor, while former Chief Operating Officer of Maslok, Daniel Exim, has been sentenced to five years in prison with hard labor. The two were found guilty on 78 counts of causing financial loss to the state, stealing, conspiracy to steal, money laundering, causing loss to public property, and contravention of public procurement law. The two have been on trial since 2019. My colleague Hansen Ajemine witnessed the trial and joins us over the phone lines. Hansen, many thanks for joining us. Give us a breakdown of today's trial. So essentially what happened today was that uh, Justice of Yashawa Karibotri, a court of appeal judge sitting as an additional high court judge, delivered judgment in this case that has traveled since 2019, as you've rightly indicated. He took time to read the entire judgment, which is about, which is an 85-page judgment, taking uh, the accused person, uh, his lawyers, and all persons who were in court to witness uh, the proceedings through how she came to the conclusion. And so, if you look at the uh, charges against the accused persons, they can be grouped into a number of key. So there was a first offense which has to do with stealing and conspiracy to steal. Now, the details of this offense is that when Madame Sedina Tamakuno was CEO of the mass law, she gave 500,000 Ghana cities as loan to a savings and loan, a microfinance company called Obatampa Microfinance uh, Company. Now, the interest that Obatamba was expected to pay on this 500,000 CDs was supposed to be 24%. So officials of Obatamba indicated that this is money that they cannot pay. As a result, they made a refund to Maslow. But this refund, uh, evidence suggested that the refund was received by the former CEO. However, there's no evidence of that money hitting the account of Maslow. And so, and since the former CEO was not available to explain what exactly happened to the said money, it was deemed to have been misappropriated and she was found guilty of the stealing charge. On the part of the second accused person, who was a chief operating officer, it meant that he raised uh, memos for the release of the money, and he explained during his testimony, which was analyzed by the court, that he could not he could not object to raising those memos because mass for its operation has been politicized, and he was afraid of losing his job, and that he was acting under the orders of a superior. But the judge did not find this defense worthy enough because. In the analysis of the judge, illegal orders ought not to be uh, obeyed, and illegal orders uh, cannot be a defense, or obeying the orders of a superior order cannot be a defense in a civil or a criminal matter relating to a civilian, but can only, per case law, be using mitigation, that is, to pray to the court to reduce the number of years or the kind of sentence that should be handed over to you. Another case had to do with some monies that were supposed to be used for a sensitization exercise. About 1.7 million Ghana cities was budgeted for that. 1.8 million was actually dispensed. Now, per that sensitization, there were supposed to be 850,000 uh, beneficiaries. Each person was supposed to be given 20 cities each amounting to the $1.7 million that was budgeted. It, however, emerged that only uh, 1,300 Ghana cities out of that money was actually spent, and that the rest of the money, there was no evidence on the record to show that it was spent on sensitization. Another issue related to uh, certain money that were directed by former President John Dramani Mahama to be released for fire victims at Cantamanto Market. All right, Hansen. Uh, let's 
Hansen, let's leave it here and we'll bring updates in our subsequent bulletins. But let's now hear from the Deputy Attorney General, Alfred Tuyabua. He spoke to journalists after today's court verdict. We have the MLA, Mutual Legal Assistance, US, we have that completed with them. So very soon, you hear about the results. So just rest assured and keep monitoring the space. But has the state been not been proactive with this? The, the judge appeared not happy that you have to wait all this while. I think the state attorneys are here. In the course of the trial, they made it known to the court that the issue of a suggestion may be tackled. But the preoccupation was to make sure the matter proceeded to finality. And today, we've come to that stage. And so we're going to take that next step. When it comes to extradition, sometimes you start and you have some kind of problems, blocks. The person may choose to appeal all manner of things. But this is, the, this is the situation where we have final judgment. It's not as if you are being brought here to be tried. But you can raise all the defense out there that maybe they are going to persecute or whatever, but it's a judgment. And so that's why I said, you, you, you hold on very soon and very soon. She'll be brought down to Ghana to face justice.